What's up guys? So today I'm going to do my biggest autopilot challenge ever by going on a trip from Limerick to Donegal. So the trip in total will be about 350 or so kilometres, so it's the longest trip I've ever done in the Model 3 and it'll also be a good test of how well the battery performs. So on my trip I've scheduled one stop up in Grange in Sligo to charge the car. It says that I'll have approximately 30% battery or so by the time I get there and then from Sligo then we'll continue the rest of the trip into Donegal. So this should be a really good test of autopilot. We'll get to see how it handles on a variety of different roads. Roads that I've never been on before. I've never been up to Donegal myself so it's going to be something new for me as well as autopilot. So without further ado let's get started. So we're just pulling out of Limerick now and we'll be coming onto the motorway within the next 10 minutes so until then I'll just engage autopilot as normal and you'll see how it works. So this is on the latest software update at 2020.28.5 so I've heard online that that does include some improvements for autopilot so we'll see if it's able to handle any of the bends a little better from last time. Um, you might have remembered from my autopilot Killarney video that we saw it does tend to take bends very quickly so hopefully Tesla have improved on that from the last update and we'll be able to see if it makes itself a little more adept at going around very sharp ends. So you can see here already this is a very sharp end and uh, it didn't do that very well. <laughs> so yeah it doesn't work very well with really sharp ends like that. It just tends to give up. It's almost like what happens when you try to go onto a roundabout. Usually if it a roundabout has a very kind of severe bend and autopilot just isn't able to handle those. You can see the speed limits are still not correct. It still says that it's 100 kilometers an hour here when it's actually 60. So you saw there that the speed limit was set at 100 instead of 60 and that's an issue that's been prevalent across all the latest um, Tesla map updates. In fact Tesla released a map update for Europe about two weeks ago and it was supposed to address the speed limit issues that we were experiencing but instead Tesla actually had to roll back the update because it introduced a number of new issues including presenting a lot of road names in Irish instead of English so it added to a lot of confusion for a lot of users. Now here we're coming up to a roundabout so I have to disengage autopilot and take back manual control myself because as you saw there it was approaching the roundabout really quickly and it wasn't going to slow down enough. So here now again you can see it's coming into the roundabout in the wrong lane and it just totally gave up so I had to take back manual control again. So you can see autopilot, I mean roundabouts are still definitely not supported even in the 2020.28.5 update. So now we're on the motorway and autopilot is basically in its element here. It's able to do everything by itself and I don't really need to have any intervention which makes driving really really super easy. So you can see now we're actually coming up to a motorway exit here. We're going to be taking the road towards Galway. So autopilot is in full control, steering, braking, acceleration, I'm not doing anything. We're approaching the exit. You can see it's after slowing down to about 90 kilometers per hour now. It's taking the bend without any problems, doing everything by itself. This is actually quite a reasonable speed. I would take this bend at about 90 myself so autopilot isn't traveling too slowly because sometimes it can. And now we need to merge onto the highway so you can do that by confirming the indicator with your hand and then autopilot will automatically merge onto the motorway for you. You don't need to do anything. And there you go. So now it's suggesting that I actually change lanes so I've activated the indicator and now autopilot is changing the lanes automatically for me. I don't really see why it asked me to change lanes though because the cars in front aren't going that much slower. So I do have it set in Mad Max mode. So Mad Max mode basically is designed to have the most aggressive autopilot driving behavior when it's on motorways with regards to lane changes. So when it's in Mad Max mode basically the car will take as many opportunities as possible to change lanes so that you're always traveling in the fastest lane possible. So at the moment now we're actually in the Limerick Tunnel and autopilot is able to handle tunnels perfectly fine although I am noticing that it's misidentifying the arrow signs that are on the roof of the tunnel as traffic lights 
so obviously that's something that Tesla haven't considered yet. But in terms of autopilot's behavior, it is able to drive perfectly fine inside the tunnel and it is even able to switch lanes automatically as well. So navigate on autopilot does disengage when it travels into a tunnel, which means that it won't automatically suggest lane changes for you, but that's not to say that the car can't automatically perform a lane change if you manually initiate it via the indicator. So shortly we'll be approaching a toll booth station, so autopilot isn't able to handle toll booths by itself, especially in my case since I'll be using the fast lane, so autopilot would automatically just follow the lane markings which direct the car away from the fast lane. So in order to prevent that I have to manually take control briefly and then I can give control back to autopilot again. So you can see autopilot's detecting all these traffic cones really well. And now I can re-engage autopilot again and everything is fine. So you saw there that it's, it's able to see all these um, traffic cones and traffic markings and stuff pretty well, but it is by itself not able to travel through a toll boot station just because there's too many different variables going on at once. Now there's actually no lane markings here on this part of the road and autopilot is keeping me perfectly fine within my lane and it did a really good job there. So that was a really wide section of road with no lane markings and autopilot had no issue navigating it by itself. So yeah, what you'll notice here is that we're on a dual carriageway, so navigate and autopilot isn't actually currently active because it only works when it's on motorways. However, the automatic lane changes do work when you manually initiate them with the indicator. So, for example, if I wanted to change lanes now, I can just flick on the indicator and then the car will automatically change lanes. But the difference is that it navigate and autopilot isn't on, meaning that it won't automatically exit the dual carriageway for me and it won't automatically make suggestions for me to change lanes. So you can see here now, because we're on the dual carriageway and navigate and autopilot isn't enabled, that it is staying behind this car and it's actually slowing down its speed as opposed to making the suggestion for me to change lanes. So in order to change lanes, all I need to do is flick up on the indicator stock and then apply some man manual steering force to the steering wheel and then it automatically changes lanes for you. So from here on out, I don't think I'll be needing to do any manual interventions because there aren't any more toll boots and it's pretty much a motorway all the way now until after we come out of Galway. that was awkward because autopilot doesn't really tend to do very well when someone's coming onto the motorway like that. So I had to manually take control there to let that guy come on because it wasn't slowing down and then when it saw the car it started slowing down really dramatically. So that's definitely something that autopilot should handle a little better. I think that's mainly because it depends on the side facing cameras on the wing on the wings of the car and sometimes they don't seem to be able to see the oncoming traffic properly. So in that case, it didn't spot the Mercedes that was about to merge onto the highway until very late into the maneuver, and then it decided to slow down very late, and it wasn't slowing down enough to let it merge onto the highway. So I had to take back manual control briefly in that situation.
So we're just going to do a quick check-in on the journey so far. I've been driving for, well autopilot's been driving for about an hour now and you can see that we've just, we're coming up past Galway at the moment. So I suppose that's nearly halfway there between here and Sligo. So I suppose we've got another hour and 50 minutes left and Autopilot's just been driving away perfectly fine, aside from those few minor uh, instances at the start of the journey where I had to take manual control when people were merging onto the highway. Aside from that, Autopilot's been in full control of the car and it's been a very smooth journey so far. Now you can see now that Autopilot did just disengage, navigate and Autopilot disengaged. Um, you can see it says poor weather detected. So what does that mean? It just means that it won't automatically merge onto or off of the highway and it won't automatically make lane change suggestions for you but it is still able to automatically perform lane change maneuvers as you saw just a minute ago there when it uh, disengaged it was still performing um, the lane change maneuver for me. So it doesn't really make that much of a difference to be honest. Um, autopilot still works perfectly fine in the rain so there's nothing to be concerned about. Okay, so now I think we're coming off the motorway and we're moving on to a roundabout that's coming up up here. So I just had to manually decrease the speed so that we were in the speed limit properly. So yeah, apparently we're just going straight through this roundabout. And I'll give it a shot, we'll see what autopilot does, but I don't think it's going to do very well. It kind of tends to behave a little better when there's cars in front, so it's doing it and no, it was going to take the wrong exit there, so I've taken back manual control again. So yeah, you see, it still can't do roundabouts. And that was a pretty good roundabout as well, because we entered it in really slowly. The lane markings are very clear, uh, but it still got confused. It was going to take the, the first exit there, by the looks of it. Um, so yeah, it's definitely not reliable. So now Autopilot's back in full control again. We're not on a dual carriageway anymore, so obviously it won't be making any automatic lane changes or anything like that. But Autopilot is still now in full control of the steering, braking and acceleration. So this is a national road, so it's quite likely that there'll be more severe bends, kind of similar maybe to what we saw on the Tralee Clarny video that we did. So I've no idea what this road is like. I've never been on it before, so I'm not really sure how Autopilot will deal with any of the turns or curves or anything like that, but we'll deal with them as we come across them. Now, as far as I can tell, the speed limit is actually 80. Yeah, it is 80. It says it here on the speed signs up ahead. So that says 80, but this says 100. So again, the speed, the speed limits on, on this are terrible. They're really bad, you know. for It's almost like you just can't rely on them at all because, you know, it could tell you to go 100 and then you'd be going 20k over the speed limit in a situation like this or like that back in Limerick when it was 60 and it was saying to go 100. Um, and then we had another situation where it was 100 and it was telling you to go 60. So along this trip there's been about four or five different instances where Autopilot has gotten the speed limit completely wrong. Um, so it's definitely not something to rely on and it's definitely something that needs to be improved in a future software update. Um, hopefully before they roll out the stop sign recognition in Europe, hopefully they'll add an, a new map update that will automatically fix all these speed limit issues that we're having at the moment. So now we're coming into a more urban setting, so it's going to be more interesting to see how Autopilot behaves. We've got a few turns coming up, so I'll need to take manual control back for those. But up until this point, Autopilot has done an extremely good job. I haven't needed to take control at all along any point of the journey um, since the, the few times we needed to go through roundabouts and stuff. Except in this case now, I will have to take control because there's this um, car transporter in front of me, so I'll need to overtake it. And then I can put autopilot back in command again. So this is a confusing enough situation, there's lots of cars all over the place. 
and I'm going to be needing to take a left turn up here. So some people were asking online if autopilot brings the car to a complete stop and yes it does as you can see the car is fully stationary now and it automatically takes off again once the car in front moves. So yes it can work perfectly well in stop and go traffic. So you can see here now that it's detected the stop line and the stop sign um, but it won't actually stop the car. So I've had to take manual control and then we'll take this turn up here. And now we're going to be following that Audi, so we'll just take another right turn here. And now that we're back onto a straight road again, Autopilot is able to take back control. So you can see there's lots of cars parked on the side of the road, and it goes very close to them. Particularly this one here, I might take back control because it was poking out a little more than it should have. Um, but now I've put autopilot back in control again. So for situations like that where cars are kind of parked and there's part of them that are jutting out, I would be, uh, I would encourage you to take back control from autopilot because it tends to not react to those type of um, edge cases very well at the moment. So if there's any kind of a, a car that's parked in an unusual way or if there's something jutting out into the road, autopilot doesn't tend to react to those um, situations very well or at all. Um, so it's very important to take back control in those particular situations. But now we're back onto the main road again, so I'm going to put autopilot back in control of everything. It's nice and straight, so in situations like these you can just leave autopilot off and it generally works perfectly fine. So yeah, I'll update you as soon as we encounter another interesting section of road. So this rain is quite heavy and um, you can probably hear as well it's quite loud and so Autopilot's doing a good job of keeping track of all the lane markings and of the cars in front with all the water and all the splashing and all the spray that's coming up in front of it. Yeah it's got no problems at all, it's doing very well. So here now we're coming up to a turn off, I need to turn left, so autopilot wasn't putting me into the right lane there so I had to manually take control myself and direct myself onto this road here and then we need to take a right turn so I'll just follow these cars in front and we'll take the right turn and now that that's done I can put autopilot back in control again. So yeah, it's not able to get you into the right lane at the moment either, which seems to be a problem. Even though Navigate on Autopilot is enabled and it knows where you need to go and it knows which turn you need to take, it's still not actively monitoring the lane markings and putting you in the correct lane, which I think it does do in America, which is kind of annoying. I don't understand why it doesn't do it over here as well. But yeah, that's definitely something that would be useful coming into roundabouts and coming up to intersections like that, especially if you're in a place that you don't know very well, because I've never been here before I, I've no idea where it is um, but in situations like that if you haven't been in a place before and there's multiple different lane markings especially if you're in a big city like Dublin for example it would be handy if autopilot did automatically put you in the correct lane but here now it's doing very well it's handling these very sharp bends this is a really sharp bend here now and didn't have any problems it did give the auto steer limited warning but it was able to handle the bend, the bend fine it was very safe it didn't break abruptly or anything like that it was good so this is kind of like a, an urban scenario for autopilot and it seems to be handling it very well so now we're coming back onto another main road um, so I think I'll just set the speed limit back to 80 it is actually 80 but autopilot says it's 60 so I can manually take control of the speed myself using the accelerator and autopilot can remain in control of the steering actually so that's an interesting thing to point out is that right now I'm handling the acceleration and autopilot is still handling the steering but now since autopilot thinks it's a 100 km an hour speed limit but it's actually 80 as you can see I can just use the scroll wheel and scroll it up to 80 and then leave control back again to autopilot. Cool, right so we'll leave autopilot off to do its stuff again and we'll see what happens next.
here now we're coming up to another roundabout and I need to take the first exit so autopilot is in the wrong lane I have to manually take back control autopilot still in control of the speed now as you can see this little icon here is still blue so autopilot is still handling the braking and the acceleration and I'm handling the steering and now I put my foot on the accelerator a little to just go around the roundabout and now autopilot is back in full control once again until we get to our next roundabout and for the next roundabout we have to go straight through it um, so we'll see how it does this time. So it's entering onto the roundabout, very hesitant, and it was going to take that exit there instead of this exit. So I had to take back manual control once again. And now we're going down a very steep hill. It's doing a good enough job, but there is a car parked on the side of the road here and autopilot is just slowing down to a stop as opposed to taking over it, so I have to take back manual control. And then here, we're kind of in the middle of the road because these cars are parked um, so far over onto the side. And also since we have these speed bumps, I'd like to be in manual control because I know that autopilot just does not slow down for them. So here I can re-engage autopilot and you can see that it is detecting all of the traffic lights here and it's also detecting the traffic cones that are over there and you can see that it even shows the orange arrow um, on the side. So I have to take back my control now just to go around the bend and now I can re-engage autopilot again. So yeah, um, those situations like that one that we just passed where there's lots of cars parked on the side of the road doesn't handle those very well. As you saw it just came to a full stop behind one car that was parked on the side of the road and it didn't even make an attempt to kind of overtake it. So that's what I mean if you're ever driving in a city environment and you see cars that are parked on the side of the road but they're kind of jutting out a small bit, be very careful because autopilot will either come to a full stop behind it or else it'll just drive on straight ahead and you could be in a lot of trouble because it could easily just hit the car. So you can actually get a sense here now as well of what the um, the mapping service is like in terms of representing traffic. So you can see that we're in very heavy traffic at the moment so you can see it's this dark colour like a wine colour. So very heavy traffic is represented like that and then lighter traffic is represented in an, in an orange colour. Um, so that's just very useful if you're going into cities and things like that you can really see exactly where all the traffic is and it can help you to do better route planning and also preemptively assess how long your trip is going to take you. So this is definitely a very kind of a busy intersection and it's picking up some of the people and some of the, it's picking up all the traffic cones and the traffic lights as well. So I wouldn't be all that comfortable with its um, detection of pedestrians, to be honest, because it does seem to be very much touch and go. I mean, there was about, I'd say, six different pedestrians there that we passed, and it was only kind of amalgamating them all into one pedestrian. So it doesn't sound very safe or reliable. So you can see if you're stopped and stationary for quite some time, autopilot will stick the car in what's known as a hold state. So you can see this little hold um, indicator here. So that basically means means that autopilot won't move off automatically when the car in front moves away until you put your foot on the accelerator and then it knows it's safe to go. And this usually happens if while you're stopped a pedestrian for example walks in front of the car and it detects that pedestrian. It wants to get confirmation from you that it's safe to move off in case it's lost track of the pedestrian but they're still somewhere there in front of the car. So it's just an additional kind of a, a safety feature. Now there's lots of roadworks going on here on the side of the road but I'll engage autopilot anyway and we can see that it's detecting all of the traffic cones which is great and there's some lane merge information up here as well so I wouldn't be confident that it would actually swerve out of the way if there were a traffic cone jutting out onto the road for example but um, it seems to be doing reasonably well so far now it is making the turn which is interesting I wouldn't have expected that 
So this is definitely uncharted territory now for me. I've never seen Autopilot do that before. Now it could be because there is a car in front that it's using as a reference point for where to follow, but there aren't any clear lane markings and there where it made the turn it was literally just following the cones and the car in front. So that's very interesting. I've never seen Autopilot behave like that before. This road is completely obliterated. There's no point of reference aside from the car in front and those traffic cones. So it's done a really good job now of navigating through that construction site. I was really on the verge of taking back control because I've never seen Autopilot do that at all. And you can see that the road markings here are actually for people driving in the opposite direction. Um, so it's definitely a very confusing situation, but Autopilot has handled it really well. And yeah, it was very smooth now throughout the entire process. There was no section where it suddenly stopped or the steering wheel started juttering about and it wasn't confused. But now here, I think I will have to take back manual control because it was just going to go straight on ahead. Um, but in that case, I'll give it that because it wasn't too obvious. The road markings were telling it to keep going straight, whereas there was just the odd cone that was telling it to, to migrate towards the left-hand side of the road. Okay, so now we've just arrived at my charging destination here at Circle K, and I'm just going to pull in and get ready to take my charging break. So it looks like the ESB have just installed a new charger as well, which is nice, but I'm going to be using the 50 kilowatt fast charger that's just behind me. So yeah, I'm going to plug in the charger now and we'll see how long it's going to take. And then I'm going to maybe get something to eat and have a bathroom break. And yeah, maybe watch an episode of Netflix or something. Okay, so a slight hiccup there where when I arrived at the charger, it was broken even though on the app it said that it was working. So I'm going to have to go back to Sligo and see if I can charge up there, which is going to be a bit difficult because um, I'm already, well, I have 30% battery now. So the car tells me that I should get back to Sligo at 28% and then hopefully the chargers in Sligo will work so I'll be able to charge them up. So it was a very, kind of a strange situation because they had one of the old 50 kilowatt chargers and they also had some new 22 kilowatt chargers but for some reason the 50 kilowatt charger didn't work and then the new 22 kilowatt chargers also wouldn't work because whenever I plugged in my car it just kept saying that the car wasn't connected for some reason so I'm not sure what happened or why it happened the way it did but now I have to go all the way back to Sligo again and see if I can manage to charge on the chargers in Sligo. So for these bends here, it's definitely slowing down quite a lot. Um, a lot more so than a normal driver would do. I don't really know why it's slowing down so much. But yeah, that, that was quite unusual behavior there. It slowed down to less than 30 kilometers per hour. And again here now it's taking these bends really slowly. So. It doesn't seem to like this road very much, but it is it is managing to do it, but it's just very unsure about itself. And now we're finally out of it. So I've managed to find the charger. I don't know why they stick them in the most remote and unusual locations, but it seems to be one of the new ESB chargers that they've started installing around the country. Right. Fingers crossed that it'll work this time. Okay, so we had better luck this time. I did get soaked, but at least the charger is working. It's one of those new 50 kilowatt ESB chargers. So um, it's charging up the car. It says it's going to take an hour and 25 minutes, which is what I expected to charge from about 28% up to 100%. Yeah, so I'll do that and then I'll update you when I'm restarting my trip. I'll talk to you then. Right, so charging session is finished. It took about an hour and a half and I'm at 96%, so that should be plenty to get me to where I need to go. So now we're going to set off again and hopefully we won't have any more surprises along the way this time. But yeah, so you can see now that Autopilot's picking up all of these um, cones on the side of the road and here again it's dealing with having all the cones on the left hand side of the road and this really giant curb on the right side of the road. So it seems to be doing well. It's actually quite amazing. The amount of stuff it's picking up is huge. You know, 
it really shows off the amount of um, data processing this is able to do per second. You know, it's very powerful, clearly. Um, and it's obviously using them for multiple different cameras as well, since it's able to track them as we go past. So yeah, definitely very impressive, that's for sure and certain. Now here we're coming up to this area and I think I'm going to take back manual control. It did do it the last time, but last time we were traveling a lot more slowly and that time I don't think it was going to be able to make the turn without bumping into one of the traffic cones. So this is the road that we were on earlier, um, about I'd say two, two and a half hours ago now at this point. That was how long the delay was. I can see there's a big flood there, but Autopilot was able to handle it. That was quite interesting actually now because obviously when you're going through floods like that it, it applies a certain amount of resistive force to the wheel that's going through the water and um, Autopilot was able to deal with that without any problems, you know, it didn't suddenly jerk the steering wheel to one side. So that's obviously good to know, it's, it's strong enough to hold the steering wheel in position even if you are going through flooding like that. So yeah, Autopilot's back in control now, it's a fairly straight road from here, we've seen it on this road doing its stuff anyway, so um, I'll just leave it off and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So I'll talk to you again whenever we have an update. This is another example now where Autopilot won't actually kind of go to overtake them on the left hand side, instead it will actually slow down fully and then continue on. So again, it's those kind of human intuitive things where, you know, a normal human driver would automatically overtake them on the inside in that circumstance, but Autopilot is just too regimental, you know, it's like this car in front of me is slowing down and there are two lane markings on either side and I can't go over the lane markings and I have to slow down for the car in front. So it just stays behind the car until they've passed and taken their turn off and then it'll continue on again. So again, I think there's a lot of kind of intuition elements that Autopilot needs to start replicating before, you know, we can get to that stage where we have full self-driving or indeed for the stage where we have robo-taxis because, I mean, that's supposed to be a huge selling point about buying the full self-driving upgrade is that you're essentially enabling your car in the future to be part of Tesla's robo-taxi network. And Obviously, that's a big selling point for it because if you enroll it into the, the robot taxi network, then you can regain cash from your car while you're not using it. But if it's the case that Tesla can't solve those kind of human nature intuition reactions on a, in a road situation like we just had there a minute ago, then something like the robot taxi service just won't work where you have to deal with other human drivers that are on the road, basically. I mean, it's one thing if every single car was a Tesla and every single car had autopilot on it and every car was able to communicate with it, with, it, with itself and with each other so that they'd know what the other car is doing and what its future intentions are. But when you're dealing with a human driver, you can't know that and the autopilot system can't know that. So it makes it a lot more difficult for it to kind of make assertions about what's the best and most safe type of behavior. So that's something that would be quite a difficult challenge to fix.
getting a bit tight now for my liking. These cars are parked very close to the side of the road. And, you know, for someone who's using autopilot for the first time, that would definitely be a case where I would take back manual control because you really just don't know if autopilot is going to make enough space between your car and the car that's parked on the side. Sometimes they don't even show up. So here now we're coming up, we're still accelerating and we're coming into this bend and autopilot was taking that too quickly now in my opinion. And then again here now we're coming up to what looks like another sharp enough bend and autopilot's going very quickly. So it's taking a very aggressive stance now towards these type of bends here. I wouldn't have gone that quickly through them myself. In this case now we're coming up to this bend up here and it doesn't look like autopilot's going to be able to make it. Okay, it did. <laughs> that was extremely close. So in that example there now, autopilot was around the bend and it braked while it was on the bend, but it, it did seem to be a little less severe than the few times when it braked on the way to, from Tralee to Killarney last time, and it was halfway on the bend, it braked very harshly. Now here again, it's taking this bend way too quickly, and I actually had to take manual control there. So in that situation now, autopilot didn't do a good job. So I think this road actually now is the first road where autopilot isn't able to handle the road properly. It's just taking the bends way too quickly. Like, it's not slowing down at all for these bends. And, you know, I've had to take manual control again there. So, yeah, I think this has pushed it, to be honest. And I'm, I'm not sure why, I don't know. Up until this point, it's been breaking before the bends, but in these situations now, it's just, it's not doing enough at all. It's just going way too quickly into all of these bends. So that was a shame, really, because up until this point, Autopilot had been doing really well, and I was very impressed. But there, it just... It just got too reckless. You know, it was... Like, we had that close call there with the other oncoming car, for example, and the road, and the car was basically on the centre line of the road. So it, it's just too dangerous for that type of... for that type of driving. So... That's an example of where you need to know autopilot's limits because if you don't take control fast enough you can just end up on the wrong side of the road and that'll be that. So it's very much something to be aware of. So here now you can see that it's taking the bends a lot more gracefully. It's maintaining a consistent speed of 71 kilometers per hour. It's not hugely dramatically accelerating like it was previously when you were on the 100 kilometer an hour road. So, for all I know, it, it could be something to do with the fact that the speed limit is so high, because maybe when it reads a speed limit of 80, it's like, oh, well, okay, then the road might be a bit more bendy, and I might need to be a bit more cautious. But maybe when it's a road that's set for 100 kilometers an hour, autopilot doesn't have that same level of caution, and it just accelerates crazily into really sharp bends. So, as you can see here now, it's doing a much better job of handling these type of bends than before. So. It could be related to the speed, um, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But at least now it's doing a better job than previously. This is a really sharp end here, very sharp, but it did manage to take it properly. Yeah, so I was kind of worried there. I got ready to take back control because I could see that the road was definitely narrowing and autopilot was still going around 80. Um, so I was worried that a bend like that would come up out of nowhere, especially going over the bridge that we just went over. You couldn't properly see what was beyond the horizon, but it did manage to take it successfully. And now here again, now it's slowing down dramatically for this bend here. And 
yeah, was able to take it perfectly. So definitely having the speed limit set to 80 makes autopilot more cautious, that's for sure and certain, because if the speed limit was set to 100, there's no way that it was going to be taking bends like this as slow as it is now. So I, there must be some threshold to say that if the speed limit is above 80, then um, it doesn't bother slowing down as much for bends. Whereas in this case, if the speed limit's set for 80, it doesn't seem to have as much of an issue um, slowing down like it does so that it can take bends like that. So this is definitely kind of, again, pushing autopilot to its limits in terms of the road is suitable for autopilot in that it's clearly lane marked, but the bends are very sharp and this is about the maximum speed that autopilot could really deal with them. Now here it did slow down quite a bit, but the bend did tend to sharpen quite a lot after going around the corner. And now we've kind of gone onto a road that doesn't really have any clear lane markings from what I can see. So but autopilot is able to handle it. It's not having too many issues at all and you can clearly see that the middle lane marking is basically invisible and autopilot is able to handle it and yeah so now we're coming into a slower speed limit zone so I'm just gonna preemptively slow it down a bit and we're basically almost at our destination now which is great because we managed to get there while it was still bright outside which is handy Yeah, I think I'm going to pull in here. That's it. So yeah, that was our journey. So yeah, I've arrived at my destination now. It's 8.30, which means it took 6 hours and 45 minutes to travel from Limerick to here in Donegal. So yeah, it was, it was a long trip. Definitely that delay that we had back in Sligo with regards to the charging really increased the amount of time the trip was going to take. Um, you can see as well that since leaving Sligo, I'm at 61% battery now and we left Sligo at 95, so I used 34% battery between then and here. So I remember I did do a calculation, well I typed into the satellite navigation when I was leaving Limerick um, if I would be able to go straight from Limerick to Donegal without needing to stop and it basically said that it would be on the limits of the range of the car because I know that I typically get around 350 kilometers of range and now I can tell that if I had done that I wouldn't have been able to make it because when we were in um, Sligo in Grange I had 33% battery and to go from there to here took 35%, so I would have been out by about 2%. Now, if I had driven a lot more slowly, then I probably would have been able to make it, but I wouldn't have liked to have taken that chance. So yeah, you can really kind of see that 350 kilometers, 350, 360 kilometers is about what you'll get from a Model 3 performance, because um, it, at that autopilot was driving most of the time, we were obeying the speed limits, there weren't any dramatic accelerations or anything like that, so it's typical driving for me. So obviously the, the 20 inch wheels do have an impact on the range, but at least now you know that it's definitely not the 530 kilometer range that they quote on the website are going to be, more realistically speaking, getting about 350 to 360. Um, so yeah, that was it basically. Autopilot did a really good job. I'd say I was driving for maybe 10 to 15 minutes in total manually and the rest of the time Autopilot did everything for me. So we did have a few instances where I had to take manual control for emergencies like earlier on in the trip when we were on the motorway and there were some uh, instances there where I needed to take back manual control for safety reasons and then of course it couldn't handle any of the roundabouts and then we did have some random swerving as well at points when the road was really wide when we were coming into Donegal and then we also had a random swerve maneuver as well when we were on the dual carriageway at one point when i asked it to change lanes and it began the change lane process and then swerved to go back into its middle lane so definitely there are still problems with it but it is by far and away a lot better than what i would have expected and especially when you consider that the majority of the trip today was done by the standard autopilot that comes on the car with the exception of the auto lane change and only with the exception of the auto lane change maneuvers. Um, the 
standard autopilot package basically did everything else. So it really is a testament to the fact that when you buy a Tesla, you can expect it to do a lot of your driving for you automatically right now. So yeah, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.